All right, well, I didn't think we were gonna be back in another debunk video this soon, but I came across this video, <clears throat> not literally, <laughs> but I came across this video from a man named Boy With Crazy Hair. And now, I wasn't really gonna respond to this, but then I was just like, eh, I might as well. Because a lot of the discourse in this video specifically has been going around or going on around the community around this game for a while now, so I just might as well address it here too. And basically, he... He just said a whole lot of nothing. This whole video is just like really bad faith and really disingenuous against Spider-Man 2. This man is like assuming everything about the game before it's even released and he's just saying again a whole lot of nothing. But I guess that's what y'all are here to see anyway, so let's get into it. There's that 1% of people on the internet that actually think this looks like a PS4 game, which is very unfortunate that people really got that mindset. There were animations that I've seen, you know, in Miles Morales and in Spider-Man one now i don't know if you know they they did this on purpose and they didn't want us to show they didn't want to show the new uh web swinging animations i don't think that everything has to be the prettiest hugest step up of all time in order to be good i would really prefer that marvel spider-man does kind of what miles and actually the spider-man remastered game did what Bro, what are you talking about, man? Spider-Man 2 is PlayStation's baby this year. Pretty much the only thing PlayStation has this year, to be honest. Xbox, I don't think they haven't shown off yet. I think that's coming up soon. But PlayStation, Spider-Man, what else do they really have? I don't see anything on the radar. Well, I mean, Final Fantasy 16 was pretty good, at least in my opinion. I mean, others, some others think it's great or even an amazing game. So, I mean, like, there's, there's that. <laughs> and Spider-Man 2 doesn't look anything really great to me to be honest it looks it looks like it might be a decent game if you really Bro, love the spider-man story ass. but as far as upgrades graphically i'm not seeing anything crazy so you're mad about the graphic upgrades oh Okay. <laughs> it's like, well, I mean, good for you. They dropped this new thing. It's called the Marvel Spider-Man 2 story trailer. Uh, they actually dropped it recently, you know, now that the game is like closer to release. And you know, as we can see from this trailer, the graphics look a lot better than they did in the old build of the game that the gameplay demo was showing off. Even when the graphics from the old build of the gameplay demo they just showed still looked better than Spider-Man PS4. And the Insomniac community manager on Twitter also said it'll be even better by launch. Hmm. It's almost like you shouldn't bitch and moan over graphics that already look looked better than the first two games when you know they're showing off an old build of the game and, I, and it's like i don't even get this anymore like do you know what fucking year we're in we're in 2023 you know the graphical upgrades are only going to get slightly better every year like going forward like this was Uncharted 4. This came out in 2016. Those graphical leaps that you're complaining about right now are literally only going to get fucking like smaller as the years go on. As far as animation changes, I'm not seeing anything crazy. And that's what these people that are holding on to the thought that, oh, maybe they didn't show off some of the web animations for Spider-Man 2 yet. Maybe they're holding back animations. Yeah, right. They're holding back animations from the PlayStation Showcase. Yeah, right. I'm sure they're just, they just can't show off the new web system they have built for Spider-Man 2. Spoiler, it doesn't exist. I'm willing to make this prediction just because of how confident I am, and also just because they came out with the wingsuit. Now this is what you have to understand about the wingsuit. The fact that they showed off the wingsuit means they probably didn't work on the web system as much. They realized that if they just go ahead and add the wingsuit into this game, it's almost like a little bit of a cover-up or fix of the web system. Ah man, you sound so confident with that little prediction of yours. So, so let's look at some information that we have about the game. Sure, I mean one of the interesting things with Brooklyn and Queens is you're not always surrounded by skyscrapers anymore. and so. We thought, what's a really great opportunity? It's something we've seen on, on comic book covers, we've seen it in the movies, we can add the web wings. Um, and that, that has really changed how we look at traversal. Swinging is always our Spider-Man core, that's where we come from, but uh, what we did is design the web wings so that we could integrate them and weave them in with swinging. You gain height and you build speed um, between swinging and the web wings and you go back and forth and really kind of weave your way through the city. It's really fun. In Brooklyn and Queens, there are some lower spaces, there are some new spaces. Um, but you, ha you have to get between Manhattan and uh, the other boroughs by crossing the river. So that's another opportunity where we could really, uh, well, we added these things called jet streams or wind tunnels. You really build speed there, and they just shoot you right along when you're on the web wings. It's really fun, and you know, it's one of the ch chances for us to really push the power of the PS5 there and like hit a level of speed that we hadn't had in the previous game. It's really 
um, added a new dimension to what we can do with traversal. Then we look at some more quotes from interviews. Beyond the speed of switching characters, there's the simple matter of speed altogether. We're really able to crank that up. You build up that speed through swinging. Swinging is always the core of our traversal experience, but then being able to add on the web wings, you get a different perspective from that. Just traversing with the open world into the new burrows, the web wings can really help with that, as well as the wind tunnels that you can go through, they really crank up your speed, and that's something that the PS5 enables, and it's really, really cool traversal experience. When we're delivering a sequel, we're looking to improve on all elements, whether it's traversal, combat, mission design. I think it's about upping everything we possibly can and taking advantage of the hardware. Things like moving at speeds we weren't moving at before and having all these different tricks. There's a fantasy of like, I want to be Spider-Man, right? But we don't want this to be such a barrier of entry. We want you to pick up the controller and feel like Spider-Man pretty quickly. But then as you play more and more, there's a level of mastery and advanced mechanics that you can layer on. Notice how they say the swinging is still the core mechanic and how they specifically design the web wings so that it flows smoothly with the swinging and why is it so hard to believe that insomniac of all studios the people who like to hide a lot of crazy shit so that people can be surprised when they get the game for the first time miles morales didn't show off anything crazy in its trailers before release and when the game came out it was a very good improvement of the 2018 swinging system and people were pleasantly surprised why is it so hard to believe they were just using the gameplay demo to show off the wingsuit because it's a whole new system in place we've already seen the swinging and the wingsuit is a lot different from swinging and insomniac knows people are already loved the web swinging. Like yes, they did show little to no difference in the swinging, but again, that is an old build of the game. That build was supposed to be shown a year ago, but it wasn't because of the Microsoft Activision deal, which is why we had no PlayStation Showcase last year. And old builds of the game won't have the same systems and animations that the finished product will. I don't know if you know how game development works, but if an animation blueprint is in place, the game won't run as properly as it will later on. Or if a certain system isn't coded into that version of the game, then that system won't be present for that current version of the build. If you look at the ETH demo from 2016 and then go play spider-man 2018 the swinging and the combat have noticeable differences as well as having things that weren't shown off because things change when you update the build of the game i was going to give him the benefit of the doubt because some of the information came out only recently but he obviously has the opportunity to know of this now and he's still acting the same way in his comments i believe it's completely fine to speculate and have concerns i myself has, have raised some concerns but this dude just comes off as like extremely bad faith and he just sounds like he's just hating just to hate and that only continues and I'm not saying necessarily the web system in Spider-Man 2018 or Miles Morales were necessarily bad. They're just, they need a revamp. I've been playing the remastered version on PC quite a bit just to, you know, go back and feel how it really is. It's really just, you know, autopilot. There's no real interactivity with the web system in the game. It feels pretty smooth but it gets very boring in a short amount of time. It's just the fact that as a player, you have zero control over it. You hold down R2, and after like an hour or two of web swinging, it just gets so unbearably boring to even try to finish the story or do anything else. This is just how I think. Five years after Spider-Man 2, five years, and we're not even gonna get a revamp of the web system. They're covering it up with a wingsuit. Okay, so this whole point is just disingenuous as fuck. I've always hated the narrative that the Insomniac Spider-Man games offer no engagement or you can't mess up or just things of that nature when it couldn't be farther from the truth. It is very possible to mess up and lose your momentum. Is it the most challenging swinging or traversal system? No. Can it definitely be improved so there's more room for the player to mess up? Yes. But if you actually engage with the mechanics of the game, it's a lot more fun than what you're describing. This is what just holds holding R2 to swing actually looks like. If you just spend your time swinging like this, then yeah, it's obviously not gonna be as fun as it could be. There's so many mechanics and things you can play around with. You can web zip, you can point launch, and with that point launch, you can control whatever direction you wanna go in. Or let's say you wanna get some height to clear a building real quick, you can hold down the left stick and it will launch you up. If you wanna get more of a boost when you're point launching, you can press X when you're about to jump to get more boost. And while it may not be hard to time the X boost, it's still a form of engagement. You can wall run to the side, you can wall run diagonally you can wall run up and vault over a building you can wall bounce you can wall run up and instead of vaulting over a building you can point launch you can hit a tight corner on a wall run you can dive to gain more speed you can land and bounce and then transition that bounce into another dive or back into swinging or into some air tricks you have to time the pressing of x correctly to maintain the speed while you're swinging and letting go of your web otherwise you're gonna lose some of that speed if you don't press x at the correct time or if you want to get more height you're in control of letting go of your web to make that happen. You have to move your character correctly so that you can keep as much momentum as possible. Otherwise, you will mess up or you will lose that speed that you've been building. There's a bunch of things in the environment that let you web tunnel through them. You can hit a quick turnaround. 
which is a lot quicker than the normal way most people would try to turn around while they're swinging. And with Miles Morales, which came out only two years after Spider-Man PS4, we now have smoother swinging, a lot more animations, smoother transitions from animations. We have over 20 new air tricks, the Venom Dash and the Venom Jumping, the ability to smoothly transition from an air dodge back into web swinging, which is really fun to do, and also it can give you a speed boost if you use it correctly and really master it. But it's really easy to fuck up if you're trying to do this little air dodge technique. We have so many options for traversal, and everything that I've gone over can be intertwined and weaved together smoothly and unlike other Spider-Man games, everything is extremely polished and the camera, which most people don't talk about enough, the camera is always on point and not wonky like it can be for other Spider-Man games. So to sit here and say, it's really just, you know, autopilot. There's no real interactivity with the web system in the game. It feels pretty smooth but it gets very boring in a short amount of time. It's just the fact that as a player, you have zero control over it. You hold down R2, and after like an hour or two of web swinging, it just gets so unbearably boring. That is just nonsensical, and he's not the only channel I've seen say stuff like this. It's just so disingenuous, and it makes the game seem like it's like terrible. He doesn't explicitly say it's bad, he actually says it's good, but that's not how you sound when you describe the swinging system like that. Like in my Resident Evil 4 video, I ba I said the, the gameplay basically just comes down to pressing L2, R2. But to add on to that, I laid out how a lot of the enemy designs aren't particularly engaging, so it can cause the gameplay to be a bit repetitive and mind you like combat and traversal are very different things but it's kind of like the same concept but the way he describes it, it's just like nah it's just pressing r2 there's nothing else really to it when as i've outlined there are so many different things you can do with the web swinging and the swinging is very fun traversal and like say something like a combat system are very different things traversal doesn't need to be some complex over the top mechanically deeply challenging or engaging system for it to still be great it just has to be fun if you want to get on like a combat system for being like like, oh, it's just not that engaging. I'll be like, all right, yeah, I, I understand that. Unless the combat system has a shit ton of variety and like moves you can pull off, like say like Web of Shadows is combat system, for example, or Devil May Cry. Like both of those games don't really have the most engaging enemy designs, but they have a shit ton of shit you can do in the combat. But again, like traversal is different. I have hundreds of hours on both Miles Morales and Spider-Man PS4, uh, like between my PS5 and my PC. And that's mostly because of the web swinging. There are almost zero games that even come remotely close to the traversal of Spider-Man PS4 and Miles Morales and even still not just Miles Morales I feel like the only traversal systems that even really come close is like other Spider-Man games and like Skate 3 or the Tony Hawk Pro Skater games nothing else even really comes close and yes the web swinging should still be the core of the system but the web wings are literally just more variety and combining the web wings with an improved swinging system and most likely improved parkour as well we're now gonna have gliding web swinging and parkour what other game has that what other game has all of that working at a high level and allows you to interweave all of that smoothly. You think you could do that, Morty? You think anyone but me could do that ever in a billion years? Do you think if God existed, he could do it? The answer is no. If God exists, it's fucking me. And like, why doesn't anyone ever get on like the Arkham games for shit like this? The traversal in every Arkham game except for Arkham Knight is not good and it is mostly the same between Asylum and Origins. And they used that for three games straight. Even in Arkham Knight, the only reason the traversal was good was because of the speeds it allowed you to get to. And the Batmobile was also added into the traversal system. But none of the Arkham games are nearly as engaging and none of them have anywhere near the amount of variety and traversal that the Spider-Man games have. Have, and yet nobody gets on the Arkham games for this type of shit. And with Spider-Man 2, if you've been keeping up with all the info and news, most of which I've covered on my channel, Spider-Man 2 looks like it's making the biggest leap from the previous game of any sequel that has come out this year, or even the past like five years. And I'm so tired of this dumbass discourse of people just being like, oh, it's just DLC, it's the same game. Like, what do you want a sequel to do? Name me one sequel in the past 10 years that has actually reinvented the wheel in terms of gameplay from its predecessor. And no, I'm not talking about a reboot like God of War. I'm talking about like a genuine sequel, like God of War 2018 to God of War Ragnarok. Sequels take what worked from the previous games and expand upon them, as well as adding new features. It's been like this for years. Why has this all of a sudden become some big issue? I just can't fucking wrap my head around it. The way they would sell this game to me is if they had more interactivity in the open world and they actually had a new advanced web swinging system. Then I would look at this game and say, okay, this is definitely worth it if you have a PS5. This is definitely a step up. 
up. Well, we've already went over the advanced web swinging stuff, but I'm not even too sure that you want that because you, you think the swinging in the first two games is just hold R2. And this is what your gameplay looks like. So, so you might want to get adapted to the first swinging system already before you, you start asking for advanced stuff. And we'll get into the stuff about the open world later. But what I'm seeing right now, I'm seeing a slight graphical step up, nothing crazy from PS4 to PS5. This is a PS5 only game and uh, graphically so far I'm not seeing anything crazy like people would probably expect. I'm looking at this game and I'm saying wow if you have a PS5 you have nothing else to buy and this game isn't really too much of a step up unless you're really looking forward to the story which personally I am not. <laughs> What the fuck are you talking about? And that's really what they're pushing with this game is the story, Venom, Lizard, uh, whoever else the other hunter guy is. <laughs> that's what they're pushing. That's what they were talking about at the Summer Games Fest. No shit that... <sighs> it's a fucking comic book character. What, what do you think that... Do you think they're just not gonna push the narrative as if it's not a really important thing for this game? The map is two times bigger. Again, I don't think a bigger map is bad. I just think developers nowadays make a bigger map and then they do nothing else in the world. Like I know for this game, they're gonna have the map two times bigger supposedly than the first, but they're gonna have probably not any increase in the interactivity in the open world. I guarantee you this is gonna have the same amount, maybe a little bit better of interactivity in the open world as Spider-Man 1 did. And Spider-Man 1, I mean, it was okay. There's fighting crimes every now and then, there's collecting backpacks, but besides that, there's not too much to really do. Are you retarded? Yeah, I was gonna waste my time, like, uh, just explaining about all the different side activities and side missions in the game, <laughs> because this man thinks the only thing to do is crimes and collecting backpacks. <laughs> I'm just gonna leave all this stuff for, like, most of the side content in the game on the screen, because I don't feel like reading it all out. If you played the game, you know. But is the side content in Spider-Man PS4 amazing? No. Is the side content decent? Well, to me, yes, it is. It's got some stuff that I don't really like and some stuff that I do really like, but I can 100% guarantee they're going to improve the side content for Spider-Man 2. As Insomniac has acknowledged the complaints, and they have told us there's going to be content in the open world designed for both Peter and Miles, like them individually, and then there's going to be other content in the open world for the player to pick either character to do it with. I will admit the new Venom combat looks pretty cool, but for me, that's not really enough. When you look at the other things that they're neglecting here open world's probably going to be neglected but big just how every other game is coming out now same web swinging they just throw a wingsuit in there to make it better i just don't like that i don't like that the fact that they're focusing too much on the story and making the map big and not really making anything else better that i can see i could get proved wrong here when the game comes out but i highly doubt that they would not have showed any of these features I'm talking about, any new web animations, anything new like that in this marketing campaign. I mean, I would have a very hard time to believe they're just holding that off for the game to come out. Yeah, well, I mean, you've already been proven wrong multiple times in this video and the game still hasn't even come out yet. <laughs> but this is a prime example of why you don't make these types of stupid ass videos and make predetermined assumptions based on little info when you don't even know how to criticize the first game properly. Even with all the info we've gotten and all the stuff that I've covered on my channel, Insomniac has told us even after San Diego Comic-Con that they still have a lot in store for us to see in regards to the story and gameplay. And they said the same thing after the gameplay demo first came out. And this dude is so mad that they're pushing for the story and like yeah like i said before the story is gonna play a big role in this game just like it has in a lot of playstation exclusives if you don't like narrative driven games then why do you care about this game to begin with if you've played spider-man ps4 I don't know what the fuck you expected from this game. Did you think Insomniac just wasn't gonna market the narrative at all? When again, it's literally based off of a fucking comic book character? And Insomniac has said that they care about story just as much as gameplay? Maybe you should go back to playing Dying Light 2. Now, I haven't played that game either because that shit doesn't look like my type of game, but I don't think it's a lot of other people's type of game either. I don't think anyone is stressing out here that they don't have a PS5 and they, they can't get Spider-Man 2. I mean, it just doesn't look that much of an increase to me. The web suit actually really reminds me of the grappling hook from the original Dying Light, just because the grappling hook in Dying Light was so OP once you got it. I feel like that's what this wingsuit is going to be in Spider-Man 2. I, could, I mean, they could level it out to where the wingsuit 
isn't that overpowered and you still have to swing. But I see it as to where the wingsuit, you're probably gonna be able to use it really whenever you really want. I feel like web swinging once you get the wingsuit is just going to be pretty insignificant to even do. Yeah, I, um, I think that's a good point to, to stop the video. Uh, if you guys wanna listen to the rest of what he's got to say, I'll put them down below in the description. Please don't harass them though, but uh, you're probably still gonna do it either way. I, I can't fucking control y'all. Just don't do it. I'm telling you, just don't, just don't fucking harass the dude. But I want to give a shout out to all my Patreons. If you would like to support me on Patreon, it's only $2 a month and I would really appreciate it. You get early access to my YouTube videos. You'll get the debate role in my Discord server for when I go lives and doing like gaming discussions, yada, yada, yada. And a couple other benefits. I thank you all for watching and uh, yeah.